in the north of the country, known as the Siberia of the Netherlands by the Dutch, lies a city which is vastly different from anywhere you lived in. It's not so much the weather, the houses, people, or even food. It's this. A year ago, I had an opportunity to go on an exchange semester to study spatial planning in the city of Groningen. And although I learned many interesting things in the lectures, which I actually still remember to this day, it was the city itself that taught me how a modern, functional, and striving to sustainability city should look like. Whilst I take you on a ride through this Genoa city, I want to present you with a couple of facts. The average Dutch person cycles over 1,000 kilometers per year, using the bicycle for more than one-fourth of all trips. There's a growing rise in bicycle usage amongst teens and young adults, as well as those over 60 years old, with the rise of e-bikes. And actually, in the Netherlands, bicycles outnumber residents with over 23 million bicycles for 17 million residents. The Dutch clearly know the benefits of cycling, which is that it reduces illnesses such as diabetes, some forms of cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and depression. It's associated with joy and improved mental health as well as subjective well-being. Riding a bike is obviously also much, much better for the environment, with 7 km trips saving up to 1 kg of CO2 and 1.5 grams of nitrogen oxide compared to the same distance ridden by a car. Both of these are greenhouse gases that cause climate change. Not to mention that it's cheaper, more quiet, and perhaps more social. <laughs> and you get also better accessibility wherever you commute. And probably the biggest marginality is the Dutch attitude towards cycling. The higher educated people see the bicycle as a status symbol, with which they can show others how close they live to work. Finishing up our tour, I want to mention a few things that make a city more bike friendly, with the examples of Groningen. Groningen is built as a compact city, with each neighborhood located within the cycling distance to the city center, which is said to be roughly 7 kilometers. And it's actually faster and much more comfortable to reach it by bike than a car, since the city introduced the traffic circulation plan, which prohibits cars to enter many parts of the city center. Thirdly, lots and lots of bike parking. Running and train station can host up to 10,000 bicycles in their underground parking facility, and not to mention the <laughs> copious amounts of parking places all around the city in all the possible places around all the possible services. Well-designed cycling infrastructure is really important to encourage commuters. Things like level differences between pedestrian and cycling paths, one-way streets where bikes can go both ways, all-way traffic lights for cyclists, which at first can be quite confusing and maybe scary, but with time you get used to it. And also these long paths with no traffic lights, and of course these sliding curbsides that prevent drunk students from crashing after a night out, and many more things. And although external environment is really important, the community and the tradition around cycling and also inner factors are just as important in creating the system that we can see in Honingen. Obviously we can't copy and paste this whole design to every single urban structure because not every single city is built as a compact city, but what we can do is implement little changes that with time will change the whole system. And also make use of what we have because if there's no real demand for cycling in the city, then there will probably be no future changes in the urban landscape. Each and every one of us makes the city that we live in. Cities have the capability of providing something for everybody, only because and only when they are created by everybody.